Barakam writes, I've ordered kits from Kit Clubs before and watched the 2P's NSD video, but I wanted to ask, when you make your own kit, either from your supplies or when you're shopping, how many and what variety of things do you typically get? Glitter Girl, can you help Barakam kick this crazy kit confusion? Of course I can. When I'm putting together a kit, it's usually one of two types. Either a kit that will make several pages or a single page kit that's just made for one layout. So we're going to look at both kinds and I'll start with a larger kit that's made to create several layouts and in general I put this together without knowing what pages I'm going to work on. The exception would be if I had one set of photos that I wanted to make several layouts from um, that I wanted all the pages to match then I might pick the photos first and choose supplies to match so if I had a big stack of travel photos for example I might pick things that were um, that were travel themed or, or or something that would work well but in general if I put a, a page kit together like this I'm just looking um, at the supplies alone and then I find photos that I want to scrapbook that will that will work with the different combinations so in general for a larger page kit I tend to go to about 10 pattern papers and this is an example of one I put together recently and although they seem, they're, they're all from a, um, a limited range of companies, there's uh, Studio Calico and American Crafts in this particular mix, but they are um, from a variety of collections. So there are elements designed by Sassafras for Studio Calico, there's the Amy Tangerine line, the Dear Lizzie line, um, and there are a lot of um, different things here. But there are actually certain things I'm looking for when I put the papers together. So for example, I tend to look for a few things that are quite subtle patterns, smaller things that repeat. So something like this, which is quite a bold color, but the repeat itself is quite small and easy to um, understand by the eye. I don't have to show the whole page in order for you to get the idea that it's a whole bunch of hearts. Something like this that's um, what I tend to call a wallpaper print. It's a small pattern that repeats and, and you don't need to see the whole page to understand the design. Other things like, that, other things like this in the same category would be polka dots. And I use a lot of polka dots. It would be very, very rare for me to put together a page kit that didn't have at least one polka dot sheet in it. Um, and so these are all things that are a bit more subtle and they can go over a full page. Now subtle patterns don't have to be things that are really timeless, they can be really trendy. So I have two chevron patterns here, the yellow and white and the white and wood grain. And, and those are both still patterns that you could use on a full sheet or in a small piece and the patterns would work. So one thing I'm looking for in my patterns is something subtle. Then I also look for things that are not subtle. I want to go to another extreme. So I have things like this bold floral pattern that has a high contrast between the colors. There's a real bright yellow on top of a, a color that I don't see in many pattern papers, this kind of reddy orange. And it's a bit more subtle. This one is a small pattern that repeats, but up close, it's one of those patterns that kind of makes your eye do tricks, so it's a bit less subtle than a polka dot. And something like this, now this is the same size chevron as before, but it's such a bright color that it's definitely not subtle. So I have my subtle patterns, and then I have some patterns that are not subtle. But there are two other kinds of patterns I'm looking for in a collection of 10 sheets as well. One of those is a paper that I can cut apart. So something that can become more than just a sheet of paper and can become embellishments to go over several layouts. There are two in this mix, this one with the Polaroid prints, and then also the back of this crazy bright chevron has these cameras which I would cut apart. So I'm looking for, um, those are three things, subtle, not subtle, and patterns that I can cut apart. And then the final one is patterns with lines, different types of patterns that are easy to write on which make it easy to add the journaling to my pages. So there's a variety of different patterns in the collection that have lines in some way, either as a grid, as a, a notebook paper, as a ledger paper, something that will make it easy to write on. There are a few other patterns in this collection that are lined in a less obvious way. So something like this stripe, if I turned it to the side, I could still use this for journaling, and there's also a black and white stripe in this collection too. So that's what I'm looking for across a variety of pattern paper. Four different things, some subtle, some not, um, things that I can cut apart and things that I can write on. 
Then I tend to get into the cardstock and I use less cardstock these days than I did a long time ago. So I tend to pull fewer sheets of cardstock than I do of pattern paper. But it's a really easy thing to just increase the number of cardstock sheets if you prefer all of your pages to have a cardstock background. I tend to go with quite a lot of neutrals so I use a lot of craft but also white cream, gray, and black, and sometimes navy blue or dark brown if the colors could do with a bit more um, anchoring from something dark. Um, but I also like to throw in the odd colored cardstock sheet here and there to match with the papers or coordinate, and this makes a great way to make a photo mat if you've chosen some really bold patterns and you need to divide between the photo and um, the pattern. You need some sort of nice neutral in between, that neutral meaning in design, not not necessarily in color. So a, just a solid colored mat around a photo can really separate it from a bold design and make it work. So in this case I've only pulled two sheets of cardstock but I could add more um, and I tend to add between two and five is a good number for me but if you wanted to have a cardstock sheet for every page you might want a few more just in case. Then I get on to the embellishments. For me that includes normally something that has a border element because I like to tuck elements into the side and, and add different little layers. And normally I always pull at least two types of letter stickers because I use letter stickers for the vast majority of my titles. And I like to be able to mix a large alphabet, preferably one that's dimensional, so that's why I tend to use thickers and something that's small, um, and normally I use a small blocky elephant, uh, elephant? Alphabet, <laughs> something like this where it's on a little tile, um, because that gives me a variety in the, the different types of typography. The other example I might use is I might have something that's a very scripted um, type font, something that looks like it's been written in cursive. If I do have one, de um, one alphabet design that's very script, the other alphabet that I choose will always be very, very simple, almost like a typewriter or a very plain print. Either of these would work well with the script because two script fonts together is very hard for the eye to read, but one script and one plain is much easier. So I tend to pick something big and dimensional and something small and flat, and that will um, give me a lot of variety for my title, a lot of potential there. And then I'll add some smaller embellishments. Sometimes these would be in a full pack and sometimes they would just be bits that have um, from the ends of packs that I've put together. So in this case I have two different kinds, these plain wooden buttons from the Gardenia button pack by American Crafts and these wood veneer asterisks from Studio Calico that also come in a bigger um, pack with lots of them. But these are just a few that I had left over so I would create um, a larger page kit like this and then I would set about doing several layouts from this and in, eventually what I would do is separate this out with my photos in mind to see how I could get the most from this but if you want to see a whole process like that you're better off watching the National Scrapbook Day video that was posted over the weekend by you know mild-mannered scrapbooker Shamel Lake. So have a look at that if you want to see a whole kit um, into all the layouts there are eight pages featured there. But let's have a look at a kit that's just one single page. There are some similarities and some differences when I put together a kit like this. For example, this time I'm starting with a photo in mind. I have the picture and I know what I want to write about this picture before I'm um, putting it with the kit. So this gave me direction in colors and different elements that I might want to include. But some of the other things are very, very similar. So if I start with the paper, I know that I wanted to go with something that's subtle and something that's not. So I have the gray starburst pattern and then this bold yellow flowers on a gray background. I wanted something that I could cut into pieces. So I could use the yellow boxes here, or maybe throw in another color and add in some aqua. But this sheet I know I would cut into pieces. And something with lines. So this yellow pattern paper from Lily Bee has a line, a really subtle line, but there is a line that would be easy to write on on one side. And as a bonus, polka dots on the other side, so I know I could use both of those in my design. So exactly the same sorts of things, subtle, not subtle, cut apart lines. That's what I tend to pull together. And then with my lettering, 
something large and in this case it's a script so I know I'm going to go with something simple for the smaller letters and in this case I pulled two alphabets because I wasn't particularly sure where I would go um, and so I just wanted to have both options on hand so I had a slightly larger tile alphabet in the mini market in yellow and a sm slightly smaller tile alphabet in the studio calico in gray so depending on if I have too much layout or too much yellow in the layout or too much um, gray I can change around one other thing you might notice is that when I did the the larger kit, everything was full sheets and full packages. When I do a page kit, I tend to pull things that are scraps or partially used. So these two alphabets are not brand new. I've used them already. And in this case, I did go ahead and show you four whole brand new sheets of pattern paper, but it would be quite often that I would supplement that with bits and pieces from my scrap basket. And this time I didn't choose any cardstock, um, but I could certainly add a sheet of gray behind there if I decided that the layout needed a bit more strength or a dark frame. And I haven't added any embellishments yet, just the lettering. My plan with this one, because I'm scrapbooking at home, is to start the layout and get everything ready and then I'll show you my process for going to get a few more elements. But if I were taking this to scrapbook away from home, I would add all the elements and the extra elements at this point so that I don't have to take a huge amount of my own stash with me to a crop. So let's get started and I have... Okay, so it turns out that if you start by saying that you're not going to add cardstock to the kit, the very first cut you might make to the pattern paper might be in the wrong place, and you might need to add cardstock straight away. So I've gone ahead and trimmed the um, the light gray, the subtle pattern, accidentally to smaller than 12 by 12, so I've gone ahead and put it on a 12 by 12 sheet of cardstock, and I'm going to go from there. I know I have one 4 by 6 photo, and then uh, quite a bit of journaling that I want to include and I want to then use this um, starburst effect to grab the attention so the um, the photo and the title and the embellishment is all going to be centered in this corner and then I'll be able to write further down the page I want to use the bright the the non subtle pattern the bold pattern up here behind the photo and I quite like the little bit of word um, word art that's on this part of the design. So I'm going to cut a box that kind of makes a very wide mat. Um, so I'm just going to mark where I want to cut. and Hopefully this time it'll go a bit better than the, the cutting on the other pattern that I got wrong. So this paper is going to be the base for my photo, but with both the photo and the pattern paper itself I don't want to add the adhesive right on the edge because I know I'm going to come back in and add other layers around um, around the sides. So I'm just placing the adhesive further into the middle. And then I'll line this up. I think I want it so the photo is straight, but the pattern paper will be on an angle because I used the um, the angle of the wording there to place the photo. So then I can go to my um, cut apart elements and I can cut a few of these apart and see which one works best for me. I want to base the title off this block and it also will have some room for a little bit of basic journaling like the name and date and place. I'm not sure if I want to go with yellow or with a contrasting color like this aqua and I quite like the fact that the aqua repeats that starburst design or the, the circular design. So I've cut both out so that I can see how they look and this is my yellow option versus the aqua. I think that I'm going to go with the aqua but I'm not going to attach it completely just in case. I'm just going to put a little bit of adhesive on here and tuck it under so that I know that's what I'm working with but it's not going to be a problem if I decide I want to come back in and, and swap it for the yellow. And um, the other thing here is to keep in mind that it could go this way with the label to the edge, or it can go this way which makes it look like there's, there's a full label there and it's just tucked under. So that's the option I'm going to run with at the moment. And that gives me this little gap up here to include my title. For that I know that I'm going to use the white um, the white scripty letters and then I need to decide if I'm going to go with the small in either gray or yellow. So here is the title and I made a few decisions along the way. 
I started by spelling from the end and deciding where the spacing would go so that I made sure that the end wasn't going to leave me off the page and I'd have plenty of room, which did mean that I ended up using um, some of the letter stickers on top of the photo. But in this case, if I had decided that whatever was in the photo here was too important, I could have swapped the larger word here and just continued the phrase in the smaller letter stickers here and had room to write the same word here. So it would have worked even with um, with something I didn't want the letter stickers on top of the picture. But if I can, I try to get the stickers as close to the photo as possible so that you can take in both the title and the photo in one glance and your eye isn't having to process a gap in between. Now, the other thing I did was because I was spelling from the end to the beginning, um, I realized that I didn't have enough G's to write the title because originally I was going to use the same font here for this letter or this word as well but I would need three G's and I only had two left on the sheet so I needed to swap so I went back to the larger kit that I'd made um, to show you first and I had plenty of G's on that alphabet so I just used those since they were the same color they're both white and like I said before I wouldn't want to mix more than one script so I used a very plain um, uh, non-script font here so that it's nice and easy to read and then decided I needed to I needed to pick between the yellow and the gray for the small letter stickers and actually both colors worked quite well but what I found was that because I wanted to start with this um, word this is a mixed font alphabet and if you're using a mixed font sometimes it's worth having to look how the individual words are going to turn out so if I use that the B is the big chunky with an outline in the middle and so is the U so those two are the same font but the T is a really narrow and um, different style of letter and if that were the only three letters that I was using there I just thought it wouldn't have the, the best aesthetic mix so I'll save this for when I'm going to spell out a longer phrase so that there's more mix of the fonts and then you'll get a better idea of how they sit together rather than just a short word. So the yellow alphabet won out here and it's nice and easy to read because of the black lettering and it's all in one font. And then I added some quotation marks around the title because this title is going to flow into my journaling and the title is taking, taken from something that someone said. So um, I wanted to make that clear so I just used the quotation marks that are on the thicker sheet. This leads me into making room for my journaling with the lined paper and then I want to come back and add some more layers and embellishment um, using some die cuts and some scrap papers. For the writing I used that lined paper and just looked at the width I wanted to use from the different elements on the page and cut it to that width and then went ahead and wrote it so that I could then trim off the bottom when I got to the end of whatever I had to say. So I could have written even more here and I would have plenty of room on the page but this amount works too. And I just wanted to make sure I left a bit at the top so that I'd be able to tuck it under these layers and not cover up the words I had written. So now I can attach that and I'm doing the same thing as the other layers, the adhesive in the middle rather than uh, rather than placing it all the way to the far edge so that I have the flexibility of coming back and adding things around the corners. And if if it turns out that there's, there's too much lift on any of the corners, I can always go back and add more adhesive. When I put the title down, I did go ahead and add more adhesive behind the aqua square because I decided that the aqua was going to stay and I wasn't going to add the yellow. So now I'm ready for a bit more embellishment. And the first thing I did was to go to my scrap papers to look for other things I could add in in, um, that would use the same color scheme and kind of pull things together. So I had um, this uh, off-white and gray, well it's it's not off-white, it's not cream, it's white, white and gray polka dot, um, a yellow chevron, and a gray and yellow floral. So I'm just going to use a few little edge pieces and my border punch um, to make some different layers to go behind these and I'll also use the polka dot from the back of the journaling paper. Once I added some uh, punches, er, punched edges to those strips, then I just start placing them underneath and nothing here is adhered yet. And I just move them around until I'm happy with them. And then I start with the bottom layer and pull things up and add the adhesive to hold everything into place. It does help to have some pieces that seem like a quite wide border because it then gives you the ability to layer other pieces on top 
and not have it seem um, so giant. And I am going to come back and add a little bit more embellishment to this, but this is where I need to start looking for other supplies. So in this case, I'm going to go to my die cuts and see if I can find any little shapes that would work. If I don't, I can always use a punch in the same pattern papers that I already have out. This is how I keep my die cuts, which is not um, any sort of uh, good, uh, good organization system for embellishments, but it really, really works for me. It's just very, very simply all of my die cuts live in this bowl. That's how easy it is. So then I just flip through and see what catches my eye. So I know that this one is yellow that catches my eye straight away. There's this bit of gray, but um, it's not really the right um, the right theme. The wording isn't right. Um, so I keep flipping through. And there's new and old all mixed in here together. Just see whatever seems to be a good match and I don't really try and overthink it I just look and pull whatever looks useful and then if I put things back at the end of that's easy and that's why it's all just loose in a bowl so that I can pick things up and put them back really really quickly without having to um, work hard at getting them back in a place that I'll remember so with the die cuts added and just a few little gems uh, to pull it all together, then that's the whole page finished. And I can just go back to wherever the layers are a little bit unstuck and add a bit more adhesive to hold everything down and everything will work just fine. Then I can take the other elements left from that page kit, mix them up with other pattern papers to make another page, or I can just put them all back in and start again with a new page kit from scratch. Now, if you take on any page kit challenges, go ahead and show us the before and after. And if you want to see more um, ideas for how to gather your supplies, it's something that we cover in great detail in Chapter 1 of the Hitchhiker's Guide to Scrapbooking. So you could always add that to your bucket and enjoy. Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com.